Welcome to this video tutorial about investigating ABAP custom code optimization for SAP HANA with the SQL Performance Tuning Worklist Tools built on SAP NetWeaver Application Server ABAP 7.4 Service Package 5. Before starting with the demonstration, I will shortly explain what this tool is all about. Well, before and even after a migration to the SAP HANA database, a major question is how to find out the ABAP code which shall be optimized, or the one that has a potential for massive acceleration by pushing down part of the logic to the HANA layer. The picture on the screen represents a typical repartition of custom code in business processes. So how do you investigate your custom code for such optimization potential? The first step is provided by means of static checks, which helps you to find ABAP code that violates the golden open SQL rules. In order to find potential for massive acceleration and to concentrate on the performance hotspots, runtime data is required. This data is provided by monitoring tools which are able to analyze static and dynamic productive code. The runtime data allows a ranking of the findings. For example, a static check is more severe when the corresponding coding has been executed very often and has consumed a lot of runtime. The usage procedure logging can be used to eliminate unused code during static checks. So as the person responsible for the custom code investigation, you need a tool that will help you to combine and analyze the static check findings and the runtime data in order to find the relevant performance hotspots. Here comes the SQL performance tuning worklist into the game. The SQL performance tuning worklist tool, which is accessible via transaction SWLT, enables you to find ABAP SQL code that has a potential for performance improvement in productive business processes. This tool combines the findings of the static checks from ABAP scans, such as the code inspector or the ABAP test cockpit, with runtime data from monitoring and analysis utilities, such as the SQL monitor or the coverage analyzer. Static checks are typically run in development or quality systems, and runtime data typically comes from productive systems. The new SQL monitor tools collect performance-related data in the background of a productive system without disturbing the business processes. The coverage analyzer can be used if no SQL monitor data is available in the system. The picture on the screen shows an example of code check coverage for specific business processes with the SQL performance tuning work list. Depending on how long you run the monitoring, you might miss, for example, quarter end or year end processes. Let's now start with the system demonstration. Launch the transaction SWLT in the other perspective of your SAP HANA Studio. On the screen, you can see different tabs, one for the general settings and a tab for the settings of each data source. On the tab general, you can set a filter to restrict the analysis on a specific set of objects. For example, only object names starting with a specific namespace should be analyzed. Additionally, you can specify whether all the findings or just the intersection of the result of the involved data sources should be displayed. Go on tab static checks. Here you can specify which static checks results should be used for the analysis. This means that an appropriate code inspection or ABAP test cockpit run must have been performed beforehand. In our present case, we will use the codes inspector checks. So we just select to have to select the inspection results. 
Additionally, you can specify which aggregation should be used for the findings. Now go to the SQL monitor. Here you can specify which runtime data or so-called snapshots should be used by either selecting an existing one or generating a new if required using the manage create snapshot button. In our case, we have a snapshot in the system and we just select it. As further options, you can uh, specify the sorting order or set some filter criteria on the runtime data. So now the SQL monitor data consumption and the status check data consumption are enabled. The coverage analyzer is only needed if no SQL monitor data is available. So that means we will not now we can load the data into the SQL performance tuning wait list. The result overview displayed on top of the screen contains the combined result list. This means that each entry represents a statement combined with its related data from the static checks and from the SQL monitor whenever available. The two details view displayed below will later come into action and be explained. On the left side of the result overview, you have the, some important measures from the SQL monitor. That is the total number of database executions, the total database execution time, and the database mean execution time. You can see the table names involved in the statement and also the include name and the include line indicating where to find the statement. A code snippet is displayed in place. Other relevant information is available. For example, the check message priority and severity the estimated relative time to fix the issue, the title and message of the static checks, the total amount of fetched or modified data, and also the buffering type. When an entry from the result overview is double-clicked, then the related SQL monitor results and the static checks findings are displayed in the corresponding detail views. I will perform two analysis scenarios in order to show you how to use the SQL performance tuning work list. The first scenario focuses on minimizing the number of data transfers, which is a critical aspect on SAP HANA for example, by avoiding nested select loops. For that, I will analyze the entries with a high number of database executions and the check message related to non-local nested select loop. To ease the navigation and the visualization, I can freeze relevant columns and I can also filter the check message. I have one relevant entry. Let me go to the statement by clicking the include name. Well, as mentioned by the check message, it is a non-locally nested select loop, so I can't see the nesting here. For that, I can use the where use list but it can quickly become very tricky and cumbersome depending on how deep the call hierarchy is. 
So what you can do here is double clicking on the entries and go to the detail views. On the SQL monitor result, detail, result details, you can, for example, see which request type and, different entry, and the different entry points calling this statement and investigate them. On the static checks findings details view, you can click on the object link and see the call hierarchy and then analyze whether this implementation can be improved. For example, by replacing the select loop by a select for all entries, if this makes sense. In the scenario two, our investigation will focus on minimizing the amount of transferred data, which is also a critical aspect on HANA. Selecting large numbers of not required columns should be avoided. So we will search for statements that read the most rails and understand why. Such statements might be qualified for a code pushdown. For that, I will analyze those entries with a high total number of database records. The first entry is related to non-local nested select loop and therefore not relevant for this scenario. The second entry is about an unsecure use of the for all entries edition. Let's navigate to the source. As you can see, no content check is performed on the internal table LT underscore invoice prior to the select for all entries statement, which means that if the table, the internal table is empty, the where condition will be invalidated and the complete table will be read. This is most probably not the behavior expected by the developer. Implementing a content check prior to the select is enough to avoid this issue. Let's go back to the result overview. The next entry indicates that a problematic select statement can be transformed. Let's go to the static check finding details and navigate to the additional information. As we can see, a select store is used, but only two fields are used. Well, only two fields of 12. So the only two fields should be explicitly part of the select list. This is the end of the demo about how to investigate your custom code with the SQL performance tuning work list. This is the end of the video. For more videos, guides and tutorial, please visit our community site on SCN. Thank you.